Well, March is National Nutrition Month, which focuses on the importance of making informed food choices and developing healthy eating habits. Barry Marine, 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 yep. uh, owner of Right Home, Right at Home in Fargo, is here to talk about the importance of nutritional benefits for some of our elderly friends. So, welcome to the show, man. Thank you. Thanks so for what's having the me. Difference between you know normal nutrition and nutrition for elderly people. Well, they're they're basically the same, but as we do get older, we tend to lose certain things. Uh, first of all, your bone density might does tend to go down a little bit, so you're going to need a little bit extra calcium. And as you age too, vitamin D is a very important vitamin in your diet. It helps you absorb calcium and some other stuff too. Your skin will actually uh, absorb less vitamin D from the sun as you age. Oh. Mm -hmm. So that's another thing that you always want to try to make sure you're getting plenty of vitamin D as you age. And then another vitamin is also B12. And those are big things. And then you get dehydrated too chronically almost all the time. So you have to always be drinking fluids. That is a huge difference. Interesting. So, wow. Yes. So should I just kind of go yeah. through some of this? Yeah. Okay. You know, in general, uh, most people, uh, we have the similar type diets again. And obviously everyone is a little different. I'm not trying to make a do a disclaimer. But if you do, a as you age, you tend to have some more chronic issues. So... Maybe a super high fiber diet is not good for you if you have gastrointestinal issues. However, in general, that would be considered, you know, beneficial. So typically, you want to have just high uh, protein, lean, you know, meat type proteins, uh, chicken, turkey, uh, especially like salmon, fish. Mm -hmm. Salmon is very healthy with omega threes and vitamin D. And you want to eat lots of fresh vegetables and and fruit, which is very similar to what everybody else does as well. Lots of colors, dark greens. Uh, I do a lot of stuff with reds in it. They have a lot of vitamins and a lot of nutrients in it. <clears throat> and you want to say, stay and have a lot of fiber. And I've brought some, some, uh, some examples here of some fiber issues that are a little bit better for you and slower burning. And then you want to drink lots of fluids. So this is a, I went and just said, you know, <clears throat> people are saying you want to get your, um, your whole grains. And that is true. But I try to stay away from the gluten side of it. Even if you're not gluten intolerant, it is not good for your gut. Mm -hmm. And that's where most of your <coughs> immune system resides in your gut. And your gut does not like gluten and it doesn't like lactose. And so even though you might be not technically allergic to whatever, if you can avoid it, it's better to just stay away from that. So I brought in three really healthy, slow-burning carbs that um, are what I like to go to. <laughs> And this is steel-cut oats. Everything here has got a lot of fiber and a lot of good carbs. We've got the, the quinoa, which is, again, good in protein and fiber. And then we've got the brown rice. Yeah. And I want to make a big differentiation between the brown and the white. White can almost be considered almost like sugar. It, has, it does have some protein and value to it, but it will spike your blood levels. This, will, this takes almost 50 minutes to cook. So this is because the hull is still on it and there's a lot of fiber on it. Yeah. So this is very good. And then I just saw this at a store last night. It's just a, a mixture. If you're getting kind of bored with one or the other, it's got the quinoa and the brown rice together. And so that is your, in my opinion, the better carbs to eat and you get a lot of fiber yeah. from these areas too. Well, and chia seeds, that's kind of been a hot topic for a lot of people, but there's yes. a better option too for people. Can be. So as you age, uh, chia seeds are great. They're great in fiber. They've got a ton of omega-3 fatty acids in it. But as you age too, sometimes you have dental issues and you may have dentures or your, your teeth aren't good and you have a tough time chewing. This would be the better choice. But if you're having some issues, this, which is kind of funny, it's hemp seeds or hemp hearts. And there is no THC or anything in these. They're just a healthy alternative. They don't quite have as much fiber as the chia seeds do, but they are a nice alternative to get some of your fiber and your omega-3s and omega-6s, and there's some protein in this too, and they're softer, so mm. they're easier to chew. So, I know. To soak the chia seeds, I've heard, or something like that. To get I, that's what Christy was saying. I, I think that's gross. I mean, it, it, it's... It's it, a texture <laughs> preference. Right. Uh, if you soak them, they get more mushy, like little gel These balls. have no flavor. They're just yeah. for texture only. So there's uh, really no... Uh, reason why you just shouldn't throw these in your your smoothies, your salads, you know, your yogurt, whatever. And if you are able to eat them, they're they're a very healthy alternative. And they have no flavor, so they're just more texture. And okay. They're just really uh, a great thing to get your omega threes out of. Coconut oil is also big over the regular cooking oils that you yes. use. Yes. So 
for heart healthier oils and so forth, you're better off staying away from the butters, mm -hmm. you know, and some of even the vegetable plants. This, these are much better alternatives. Get the extra virgin olive oil and, excuse me, the uh, coconut oil. And it kind of comes, it'll be in a solid, but as soon as you warm it up, it'll, it'll turn into like an oil. And it tastes better. Yeah. Because, yeah. you know, problems when you age too, people don't understand that you start to lose some of your taste. And you'll see older people throwing a bunch of salt on stuff, and it's not because they love salt, and we got to stay away from sodium because that'll cause high blood pressure typically. We try to get them to eat other things like herbs, spices, maybe some of this olive or this coconut oil because it really does give it a very nice flavor when you're cooking your vegetables and so forth. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, of course, olive oil, extra virgin olive oil is always a favorite. And if you have a choice between, between like, Corn oil and olive oil, just it's much better to choose the olive oil. It's a much healthier alternative. And this is something that you told me, you throw it into your smoothies, your shakes, and this is gonna be a lifesaver for you. <laughs> Pretty much. Now, again, everyone needs to talk to their doctor if they have issues with so forth, but this is kind of considering people are somewhat healthy. And, but this is really a superfood. It's got, it's a protein derived from plants only. And within there, there are probiotics, antioxidants, fiber, omega-3s. It's really, and it's only 160 calories with one gram of sugar. <clears throat> nice. So I get a lot of this information from this book here, and this is kind of my favorite go-to dietary book. Yeah. It's, um, it's called Zero Belly Diet, and I'm not promoting him per se, but this David Zinchenko, most people know him as the eat this, not that author. And so he's a very well-respected uh, nutritionist, and this has really just kind of changed the way that I have eaten, and I've tried to cut out, you know, yeah. the, the processed flowers and the dairy and all that stuff, and he explains that all in this book. So. How can people get your help if they need it? Well, the easiest thing is to just go to um, FargoHomeCare.com, and then it's, uh, that's probably the best and easiest way to get that. Perfect. Thank you very, Thank much, you very Stay with us. We'll be right back. Thank you.